And joining me to discuss this development is Achike Chude, a political affairs commentator. Achike, thank you so much for joining us. So, of course, this all takes us back to what evolved very quickly after August last year, where protesters were in the streets, of course, from the opposition, and that led to the ouster of Ibrahim Boubacar Keita as the leader of Mali. And since then, some can argue that there has been, and as, and that, and as usually is the case with these transitional governments, you can call it a bit of a patch job. Big question now is that that is being tested and what happens next, given the latest development? How do you analyze the situation? Well, I mean, it is obvious that um, Goita, who has taken over, will not be allowed to um, uh, to run um, Mali's uh, transition till the uh, election. He is not, obviously not going to be allowed. And he has obviously not learned a lesson from what happened the last time uh, that they were involved in this power grab. Um, it was exceedingly very, of course, we know that um, at the initial stage, uh, the people uh, were misled, I'm talking of the Malian people, into supporting supporting him, uh, essentially because the people were tired of the out of, of, of uh, the uh, previous government. Uh, they were they were they were worried that the, the previous government did not seem to have solution to the uh, crisis in Mali, especially with regards to the insurgency and then the acts of terrorism that was going on, the war that was going on against the insurgency. And then, of course, serious deep-seated economic issues and then the political crisis at that particular point in time. But I think they got the people, they read the people wrong. Because by the time the got that government had been ousted, they now wanted to consolidate on power. And the people also you know, embarked on another round of resistance to military uh, governance. And of course, supported with the ECOWAS and the, the international community, it was very difficult for him to hold on to power. And then they now had to have this power sharing arrangement. Obviously, what this latest um, you know, power grab has shown is that there are elements within the Malian military uh, that um, military establishment that are contemptuous or disdainful of a democracy. And so the man says that uh, he's going to usher uh, in, uh, that he did, uh, he staged this latest uh, power grab uh, in order to preserve uh, Mali's constitution. That is a laugh. It's a com complete contradiction because military governance uh, is an aberration to democracy. The two are antithetical. They are miles apart. So you cannot... Um, seize power uh, from uh, maybe a civilian civilian led government on the basis of wanting to preserve uh, the constitution i uh, of course we all know that it's a power grab it's, it's a coup right but it should be obvious to him by now that uh, it's not going to succeed so you expect that sanctions will follow from the international community maybe starting with ECOWAS. um what impact do you think that could have on the dynamics in mali right now well unfortunately something has to be done and uh, you don't uh, you don't want to encourage uh, these military adventurers to think that they can do this, uh, you know, and then get away with it. So there has to be consequences, uh, not just uh, you know um, the people who have committed this power grab, but of course when you impose sanctions, uh, in most most cases sanctions also tend to you know affect the people. But so we are going to have limited or targeted sanctions, sanctions sanctions targeted at the people who uh, are involved behind this latest uh, power grab in uh, Mali. Um, so I, I think that uh, the international community will be careful as much as possible to ensure that um, uh, it does not uh, do much damage to uh, the ordinary uh, Malians. So I think that this is something that they have to uh, work out. But obviously, the dynamics is going to change sooner or later. I do not see Guaita remaining in power for the next one month. I think the international community will come together to ensure that uh, that uh, he's removed. And this time around, I do not even think that he should be happy that he should have uh, the, uh, the the privilege of being part of this government because he has shown that uh, he has an attitude that is detrimental to the development of a uh, Malian democracy. He should be shown the way out. How they are going to succeed in doing that is something that I think a lot of them will have to sit down and well, work out. But for as long as he and his military adventurers are in power, they are not going to allow the civilians uh, to move Mali towards the path of transition. I hear you when you say that um, it, his position will not be accepted by the international community and, of course, the regional um, leaders. But then, as you know, Mali is it's a bit of a very it's a bit of a delicate country within ECOWAS right now. As you know, in the northern part of the country, we have some forces that 
are so supposedly linked to terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda. And that potentially could be a destabilizing force within the region, depending on how this all this plays out. Do you think that um, the, the international community, and of course, more specifically, the regional leaders, are considering the impact of volatility in Mali on the region? No, obviously they are, they are. Uh, of course, there's no doubt that this will cause some level of uh, uncertainty and instability. And so you need consistency of government and governance, uh, you know, for you to begin to achieve, uh, uh, make some progress uh, within, uh, you know, a nation state. And uh, this kind of um, reversal of uh, the, uh, the move towards uh, a democracy uh, is, is something that uh, only the, that the rebels and the, the, uh, the anti-social forces, the insurgency, the terrorists, and all the other violent groups are only going to benefit from. Uh, because, uh, uh, you, you, like I said, you need some level of, uh, of consistency. So who actually is engaging the insurgents at this particular point in time, while the, when the military is um, involved in uh, trying to uh, is involved in governance uh, or trying to, or, you know, is involved in the forceful takeover takeover of gov governance. So we do not need this in the in the sub region, and I think it is going to be a source of worry to uh, uh, inter the international community, especially the regional organization ECOWAS. So they have to look for ways to navigate uh, through this and to do it as quickly as possible, so that um, they can fix, you know, uh, uh, their eyes can be can, can remain fixed on the ball, and that is with regards to the insecurity that is plaguing uh, Malian national life from, you know, the activities of insurgents and terrorists.